Hi everybody. Today I'm going to talk about part four of my tarot collection. Um, it's going to probably end up being five parts, so I will jump straight in. The first ones I'll talk about both because they're both Rider Waite Smith decks. So I have the original Rider Waite pack. I don't work with the, the original Rider Waite cards. Um, but I like having it in my collection. It's just those backs. So everybody's seen this. This was the first one I picked up. It's not the first deck I've had. I didn't get a original right away until last year. I think I picked up my first one. Um, I've never read with it at all ever, um, but I like to look through it every now and then. And I like this little box, so that's pretty cool. So that's that one. And the other one is, I picked this up for $10. This is a um, uh, a vintage blue box one. I um, got it on Facebook Marketplace for 10 bucks. So I was stoked with it. I wasn't sure if it was going to be all the cards there, but it was. It's not a blushing fool, so it's still one without the copyright. I love it. The, the cardstock is really buttery and it just compared to that other right away pack that I've got it the line work everything is just beautiful and the colors so yeah that's my other right away deck right away Smith so that's those two. I'm going to jump in some of my ones I keep in bags, get them out of the way. So I got the Angel Tarot by Jane Wallace. It's a Chico Books one. It's a good little guidebook. It's got a coloured picture and some information. So about a page for each card. There's the backs. I bedged mine in numerous colors. It's a pip deck. Glossy cardstock. Got keywords on them. I don't mind that it's a pip deck because it has the keyword on it. So it makes it for an easier read. So that is the Angel Tarot. Next one I have is the Orion's Animal Tarot by Ambi Sun. It's a rock pool deck. It's a nice guidebook. Got the full colored page. Well, not full color, it's got the little colored page image on the page. About two pages of information, roughly. It does come in a box, but I keep it in a bag. Anything with a biggish sort of box, I keep in a bag. It's got nice silver edging. This is the mass market one. You can also, it was an independent deck as well. I actually really really love this deck more than I was expecting. It's so beautiful. It's when I saw it on other people's channels I thought it was nice but when you actually get it in person in your hand it's stunning. All animals.
So that is the Orion's Animal Tarot. Next one I have is the Antique Anatomy by Claire Goodchild. Lovely guidebook. Got information about the numerology. It's got companion cards, a bit of information about that. Astrology. Talks about the elements, colours in the tarot, way of using the cards. It's in some spreads. It's an awesome reference book. Look at these beautiful full colour images in the book. And then information about the cards. Love it. I've edged mine in a maroon colour. I like the black and white with the pops of colour with the flowers. Another pip deck. I don't have any problems with the cardstock. I've heard people say it's really, really thin. So I didn't get mine until, I don't know if it was last year or 2020. So I'm not sure if this is the newer cardstock, but I don't think it's that thin. I think it's fine. So in saying that, I'm assuming I've got the better cardstock. So that is the Antique Anatomy Tarot. Next deck is the Dark Goddess Tarot by Ellen Lorenzi Prince. Got a full colour picture. It's got a great guidebook. I find I need to reference the guidebook in this deck because I'm not well versed with goddesses. This is the mass market edition. It's got the gold edging. Personally, I think if I, if it wasn't for the great guidebook, I probably would have rehomed this deck. I need to reference the guidebook personally for myself. So I do a reading. I read it intuitively and then I'll actually look at the guidebook and find out what that has to say as well. That is the Dark, Dark Goddess Tarot. Next deck I have is the Green Witch Tarot by Anne Mora. It's another lovely book and the artist is Curie Ostergaard Lennon. Llewellyn deck. It's got some room for writing notes if you'd like. And it's got a black and white image and about a page and a half of information. Green backs reminds me of Christmas, the backs on this deck. I haven't had this one very long. But I like it.
been around for a long time. A lot of people have this one. For a long time in the tarot world, with all the new ones that have come out. So that is the Green Witch Tarot. Next one is the Everyday Witch by Deborah Blake and the art is by Elizabeth Elba. Another lovely guidebook, got room for notes if you wish. And the image with a page and a bit of information. It's bluebacks, a veg mine in pink. This one's very different to the green witch, the energy wise, I think. Gives good readings. Easy to read, I find. That's the Everyday Witch. Next one is the World Spirit Tarot, the second edition by Lauren Onka O'Leary and Jessica Shuko Godina. This is an independent deck, I think. From 2001. I'm not sure if this is still in print or not. I've trimmed, trimmed mine, there's the backs. And I've edged mine in blue. It had black border all the way around. I've, I've trimmed that and I've trimmed a little bit off the bottom border as well. I like it much better with the borders off on this deck. Beautiful deck, I really like it. So that is the World Spirit Tarot, second edition. Next one is the Raven's Prophecy Tarot. So Llewellyn deck, it's by Maggie Stivada. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Okay, it has a black and white image with a page and a bit of information for the, each card. The, Backs. I like the backs and I've edged mine in orange. I actually like the orange borders around this deck. I love the simplicity in the design in the images. I love the interpretations for the cards in the images. Love it. Three swords. And then just the hands with all the. I enjoy working with it.
And I like how the coins have got the roses. Something different. That's the Raven's Prophecy Tarot. Okay, and the next one is the Arc Animal and Oracle deck. This has got a hundred cards. Um, it's by Bernadette King and the art is by Heidi South Sutherland. So this one has it's a tarot, tarot and oracle in it. Um, so they're all animals. And then it's got the information on the oracle at the back. I've joined, so I keep mine together. I just do the readings with the oracle and the tarot mixed together. It's a big chunky deck over the backs. So it's quite large, especially with the 100 cards. It's got some keywords and some little, the symbols, some symbols on the bottom. Enjoy this deck too. It's a mass market deck. So it's the Arc Animal Oracle and Tarot deck. And now I'm going to my box decks. I have an old copy of the Aquarian Tarot. I picked this up second hand. Um, it says copyright 1970. So it's an old, doesn't have a guidebook or anything with this one. It's got lovely aged sort of edging, nice cardstock. colors in the Aquarian Tarot and the detail in the faces. An oldie but a goodie. So that is the Aquarian Tarot. It has some interesting things in the cups. Like this little helmet thing on there. The next deck is the Talking Tarot by She de Montfort. This is, I'm pretty confident this is out of print. It's um, a really quite a weird deck. She's an Australian um, She de Montford. So um, even the guide box really old. When was it published? I think she created this deck as a um, like a learning deck. I'm not sure when it was created. But it feels old. I'm guessing 90s or something. They're the backs. So she's got some keywords. It's a pip deck. I 
like there's nothing special about this deck like it's not beautiful to look at or anything but there's just something I like about it it's just random at the page of one she's got Sir Richard Branson new idealist for the keyword So that's the Talking Tarot by Sheeda Montfort. Next one oh, is the Tarot Classic. It's just a um, vintage Marseille deck. I don't read with Marseille, but I like looking through it. They're the backs. Nice card stock's beautiful. Maybe one day I'll start reading Marseille. So that's that one. While I'm looking at the Marseille, I might as well finish off with the, we'll do the other Marseille deck that I have. I only have these ones, the one JJ Swiss. This one is an older one as well. Thanks. It's got the lovely cardstock on this one. I think it's an 80, 84 or something publishing. I like this one better than the classic. I like the colours in this one. So it's the 1JJ Swiss Tower. Next is the Pagan Other Worlds. It has moon cards in there. I don't read with the, the moon cards. Next. These cards are super slippery. They're like a linen style. I know sometimes they almost feel slimy. I don't know, it's hard to explain. They're well, not really slimy, but sli I don't know. They, it's almost like the oils of your hands get on them or something. It's just random. I don't know. Does anyone else have this deck that finds that as well? It just they slip all over the place. It's a beautiful deck though. Sort of like illustrated pips. Nice introduction to reading with pips, I think, this deck. It's Pagan Otherworlds, um, Noosa deck. Next deck is the Druid Craft Tarot by Philip and Stephanie Cargom and illustrated by Will Worthington. It's the guidebook. You can get the, the bigger um, guidebook version. This is the one that I have, but I think this has still got really good information even for the little book. It's awesome. This was my first ever tarot deck that I bought and so I learnt to read on this deck. I've trimmed the border off. I only had this tarot deck and was the only one I had for I think two years. It's 
very familiar to me, this one. The, uh, between this one and um, what's the other one that he has? The Wildwood Tarot. I have both, but obviously I favoured this one and I've had it the longest. Next deck I have, this is a Mages Only, whoops, Mages Only deck, The Lovers Tarot by Jane Lyle. Um, it was designed for love readings. I don't, I don't read with it, it's just a Mages deck because the, um, cards are huge and plus I don't read with majors only I didn't wasn't aware of that when I picked it up um, what is this? 1992 this one came out it's got like a little ribbon um, it's got about the relationship the gift the challenge about the future the gift and the challenge and the full color page of each. So that's that. And the cards are massive. They're beautiful. Beautiful. They're even bigger than the large if anyone's got Bubba Shido's deck there the large format cards. Actually, I should just show you a comparison. I'll just grab out the card. That is, that's how big. The cards are really, really large. Huge. Even though I don't use it for readings, it's one of those ones that I like to bring it out and enjoy the image. So that's the lover's path. Sorry, the Lovers Tarot. Next is Modern Love Tarot by Ethany. And the illustrations are by Lucy Morningstar. Beautiful backs. Gold edging. This is an indie deck, I believe, but I got it on Amazon. So I love the way it shuffles. Nice card stop. And I love the bright images. Oh, it works beautiful. I don't use it as just a love deck. I just do general readings with it because I only read for myself. So it's got a lot of expression. Like this deck is pretty cool. Some of the expressions like the one and the five of wands it just gives you that gut reaction when you see it sometimes and you can just sort of feel the way they're feeling i 
I like that judgment card. I think they've done well also to add some diversity in with the deck as well. is the Modern Love Tarot. Next up is the Brady Tarot. I think this one is the second edition. Emmy Brady is the artist. And it's by Rachel Pollock, the book. Beautiful edging. I really like this gold. Card. So the borders uh, on the back are the same as what they are on the card. So the outside one, that white one, is swords, wands, cups, and pentacles. So a rose petal type finish to the cards. I like this animal deck, this Brady Tarot, because quite confronting on some cards, like the real world realities of the animals. Not on all of them, but some of them. And it has a keyword on the miners. Success and his, his birds being killed. So that's the Brady Tarot. I like that one. Next up, Whispering Spirits Tarot by Joanna Nelson and the guidebooks by Trish Sullivan. I love this one. I don't have the Mons Tarot, but I just have this one. I chose this one over the Mons because I like the colours more. This one's more of a green base deck with yellows and blues and purples. I like all the little, little eyes and the little faces. and the flowers and stuff. It's pretty cool. A lot of origami use in the cards. The butterfly, birds and those little boats. So cool, and the guidebook's good. It's got a little bit of information for each. So that's the Whispering Spirits Tarot. Next one I have is the True Black Tarot. And the guidebook's great. It's got some keywords and a good description on, about each of the cards. Beautiful backs. Mine's got a little bit of a bow to it. Black edging. The cardstock is really soft, like velvety almost. 
The images are beautiful. I love the cups in this. And I like the colour palette with the gold and with the black background with the white or silvery white. different to anything I have. I really like it. Just look at the light coming down. It's so lovely. Love that card. This cardstock is different to any other cardstock that I've got in my collection as well. It's a beautifully made deck. So that's the True Black Tarot. Next is the Naked Heart Tarot by Gillian C. Wilde. This was my first ever indie deck that I bought. I found it on Amazon. This is before I knew anything about indie decks. Here are the backs. Oh, the Guidebook's good too. It's got a page for each of the information. It's great. I like that two of cups. So that's the Naked Heart Tarot. Two more for this video. The Syrian Starsea by Patricia Corey and Alyssa Bartha. It's a good guidebook. The, the suits have changed, so crystals are pentacles, chalices, cups, orbs are swords, and flames are wands. Good guidebook. These are large cards, but I've trimmed mine. But even though I've trimmed the borders off and I've edged mine in blue and black. With trimming the borders off, um, it has cut off some of the title on some of the cards. I put several of them, I think, but I don't mind because I prefer it much better without the border. So you can see on this one, part of the M, part of the S is trimmed. I enjoy this deck. I don't love all of the images. Some I like a lot and some I don't like at all. That's one of them. It's probably my favourite hangman out of any of my decks. One of my favourites. I don't like that card. I love that card for death.
just like Hades looking for me. So that's the Syrian Star Sea Tarot. Okay, and the last one for this video is the Tarot of Prague. This is by Karen Mahoney and, by Alec, and Alex Ukolov. Um, mine's the large edition when it comes in, it came in this box and they've just sent me some sample cards from other decks and a little guidebook. I do have their full um, guidebook as well, but I didn't bring it for the video. So it's a nice, lovely box. Um, it has a couple of options for the death and the lovers. Beautiful backs, nice Bubba Studios deck. This is one of my favorite decks actually. I've got a standard size deck of the Bubba Studios in the Fantastic Menagerie but I prefer this large one much better. And the gold foiling in it is beautiful. Oh, the work is so beautiful. I think the foiling makes it too. Shuffles lovely because the Bubba Studios have lovely cardstock shuffling. I've got the Victorian Romantic on order. Um, I ordered it in May last year, so I just can't wait for that to arrive. So that is the Tarot of Prague and that's it for this fourth part to my Tarot deck collection. There will be one more part and I look forward to seeing you then.